So I want to take a few minutes to give you some tips for making really impactful interior design photos. One of the most important things to consider is lighting. I see a lot of interior designers shooting all of their designs with all the lights on or they're shooting right into harsh sunlight. And when you're, when you're at a home, right, um, I really want you to consider where your light is coming from. You should have one big soft light source. Now, of course, there are exceptions to this rule. But for example, if you are shooting an interior and you have direct sunlight coming in, consider shooting that at another time of day when the light has kind of moved away from the furniture. This will greatly simplify the composition and that nice soft light is going to add a lot of uh, texture and dimension rather than this busy hard light that comes in. Now, of course, there's, there's rules and they are meant to be broken, but for the most part, a nice, soft, gentle light source will really make your interior design look great. Something else to consider is turning off the interior practical lighting. Now, what I mean by practical lighting is the lighting inside the frame, the tungsten gold sort of installed lights that you've designed now. Obviously, lighting design is a very important of interior design, but if you're shooting in the day and you aren't a full-time 100% photographer, it can be a real pain in the butt to tackle this. So turn off your interior lighting and try to get one consistent color source. That would be the light outside. When you're dealing with the interior lights, the orange glow from those practical lights is going to sort of mess with the color temperature of your photo and it's not gonna give you a true representation of what the interior looks like. So think about when you're living at home. Do you live with all of the lights on all the time? Probably not, and I think photos should represent how people live in their home. So if you're getting up and having a morning coffee and you're shooting in the morning, go for that look. Don't turn everything on and try to flatten everything out with that golden light. Um, consider just leaving the natural light, turning all the interior lights off and trying to add a little bit of mood and liveliness to your photos. Lastly, be sure to consider camera height. It may be tempting to try to get a shot of everything by standing here with your phone or your camera and pointing down and looking into the floor. But if you pick up any high-end interior design magazine or catalog, note where the camera is. It's usually between people's knees and their stomach. When you're down really low, it gives a really intimate, beautiful look at furniture, which is great for details. And if you're putting the camera above about chest height, you start to pretend that you're like an NBA basketball player and you have this weird sort of feeling of looking down into the frame. Most people can't relate to that, so I try to keep the camera between my knee and maybe my chest, but for interior design, stomach height is probably a good happy medium. So let's take a moment to talk about equipment. In perfect conditions, you can get away with using just an iPhone, but unfortunately, we're not always shooting in perfect light. What you're really going to need is really a tripod, especially when you're shooting interiors. Exposure times can get up to the two, three, and four second range, even in broad daylight, so you wanna make sure you have a good tripod. I tell people that a tripod is your sharpest lens. The camera honestly doesn't really matter these days. Everything is so darn good. But what is important is a remote trigger so that you can trigger the camera without shaking it. Because like I said, you're using really long exposures. You don't want the camera to shake after you push the shutter. So if you use a remote trigger, preferably wireless, you can uh, trip the shutter without banging the camera. Lastly, a bubble level. Like I said a few minutes ago, it's really important to keep your camera straight and level. And a bubble level that slides into the hot shoe or even just sticks onto the camera with an adhesive will make sure that you keep your shots nice and level and you won't have to correct things in post-production. Last but not least, I really recommend some kind of tethering solution. What that is, is a way for your camera to show the images directly to a computer or an iPad. Now, this isn't totally necessary, but if you really want to take your pictures to the next level, being able to see them on a large screen before you lock them in will really help. There's so much detail in these shots and unlike portrait photography or landscape photography, everything is very important. So you might want to tweak the pillows, you might want to fluff the blankets, you might want to turn the flowers and adjust things so that the photos make more visual sense. And being able to see your shots on an iPad or computer instantly when you shoot them is a huge help. It is, you know, uh, a bit of a financial commitment on top of everything else, but if you're able to go that route, it will make your photos so, so much better. One of my favorite pieces of architecture and interior design in the world is the Broad Museum in Los Angeles. And it is just this wonderful, wonderful combination of great, great, huge glass windows. Everything inside is uh, controlled electronically and the interior lighting adjusts depending on the ambient light automatically. And when you couple that with these giant white museum walls and the art inside, it's just absolutely fantastic. It's a nice, huge, wide open space with 30 foot ceilings. Uh, but as you wind your way through the museum, you're really entering into this dark and light sort of uh, play on, you know, on, on different levels of brightness. And it's an amazing experience that compresses and opens up and it just suits the artwork so, so well. It's brand new, it's in downtown Los Angeles, it's the Broad Museum, one of my favorite architectural pieces in the world. In terms of interior design, the, 
my favorite thing is a classic Scandinavian interior design, especially things from uh, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, just, you know, like the Fritz Hansen chairs and everything like that. Uh, I find it absolutely stunning, the use of color and the wood. It's both soft and sterile kind of at the same time, and it's such a joy to photograph. So my favorite designer or architect is probably Richard Neutra as a result of his case study house number 22. Uh, it is, as far as I'm concerned, the most perfect home in the world. If you ever get a chance to visit, it's in Los Angeles again. Absolutely fabulous, beautiful sighting, beautiful interior design, and really, really revolutionary for the time. Um, the use of materials, the use of the layout, it's just really a fantastic piece of architecture. And you can kind of see that uh, replicated in his works throughout the years. He has this just wonderful sort of pared down style that I think is am amazing to photograph and would be amazing to live in.